please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Hello everyone, welcome to the exhibition of stupid people. We haven't done one of these in a few weeks, have we? It is somewhat impressive how much uh, goes on when you're not sticking to what you're more suited to. Yes. We're going to start with a musician called Sabrina Carpenter. I only know of this person because they keep on getting number ones. Although, from what I've been told, it's the same two songs they just keep fighting each other for number one. Essentially, they're a one-hit wonder, but spread over two songs. They are due to be touring the United Kingdom in 2025, a tour titled Short and Sweet. No doubt, it's not the longest of tours at all. Fans, though, are not best impressed because she's a somewhat newish person on the block, as it were, and her ticket prices are a bit higher than what many would expect. Ticketmaster, who many hate because they're disgusting, has some of these ticket prices at a bit of an extorted rate. Not a joke, some start at £234. I don't know what kind of show you think you're putting on, but there's no version of any type of gig I'll ever go to where I willingly pay that. I want to see Queen, and their tickets are about that, at the cheapest end. And I'd love to see Queen, but I'm not paying 300 or 200 or 100 to go and see them. They've earned the right to be there, but that doesn't mean I'm willing to give them the money for the right to be there. In Sabrina Carpenter's place for a show at the O2, for a seated spot in the, well, the peanut gallery, that is what you're charging. Which is amusing, but at the same time, really bad when your audience are teenage girls that are more likely to go see Taylor Swift, for example, on her rather never-ending eras tour. As opposed to Sabrina Carpenter, who is now known in the United Kingdom for two number one singles and two minnow songs that did reasonably okay. And again, I only know this because there's been a lot of news coverage on Sabrina Carpenter because she is with uh, the guy who is the Joker in the Twilight actor's Batman movie. That one, yeah in the scenes that barely anyone got to see, yet were surprisingly good. Yes. I understand, I fully understand, taking full advantage of an opportunity presented to you to make as much money as you can. But since you are a Disney princess, this only comes across as someone doing the Disney thing of milking a cow until it's dry, and you don't have the humps to be anything but dry, or the talent. When you are accused of having tickets more expensive than Beyonce, something might be wrong. You can put on the most spectacular show on the planet and spend vast amounts of it on pyrotechnics, but let's face it here, you're going to be on stage for an hour and a half at most. Some put on longer shows and you do get your money's worth, but not, no. An old friend of mine bought me a ticket to see Machine Head for their Burn My Eyes show at Brixton. It was a great show. Machine Head played the entire three hour set and the ticket was 45 quid. That is a gig. I understand the difference between a gig, a concert, and a show. I fully do. But for the amount of pounds and or euros being forked up, anything over a hundred is extorted. Even Rammstein wasn't that expensive. And they're also another band that deserve to be able to charge a bit more for their shows. Moving on from that, we now need to move into the world of equestrians. The horse stuff. The Paris Olympics are coming up. Charlotte Dujardin is a uh, rider who in 2012 in London won individual and team dressage gold on Vallegro. Four years later, individual gold and team silver, before sealing double bronze at the Tokyo Games in 2021. A two-time world and multiple European champion, widely seen as the darling of British dressage, was meant to be given a damehood this year. Well, that went out the window because the video is doing its rounds. I cannot show it, by the way, because it involves animal ABUSE. There are certain ways of how to train your horse. Some go with a more extreme version. And because I'm not as knowledgeable on horses, I have to rely on what is reported as to whether or not it is acceptable. Generally speaking, I do not accept anyone, for any reason, hitting another person or creature. I will not abide it. If I can train the most unruly dog, without so much as having to boot that dog's snoot once, you can train your hamster to do sodding cartwheels without doing the same. 
it's not overly complicated after all. She was set to compete on a horse called Imhotep, also known as Pete, which is her first horse since Vallegro to score more than 90% in international competition. The pair have been unbeaten since last year's European Championships. On Tuesday, Dujardin released a statement saying she was withdrawing from the Paris Olympics because of a video. In the video, she is using a Indiana Jones length whip and she's using it on the horse during what is dubbed a training session at her private stable. She has confirmed she is the individual in the video. The video was filmed several years ago and the governing body, the FEI, have provisionally suspended her and requested a investigation into this matter. On top of that, both the British Equestrian and British Dressage have also imposed suspensions pending the outcomes of those investigations. As a consequence, her UK sport funding has been suspended. Two of her sponsors have terminated deals with her. World Horse Welfare Chief Executive has said that this is a wake-up call to anyone who thinks this is not important. This is where we now know what she did in the video with the whip was beyond levels of acceptable because I'm not as knowledgeable, I need to learn. She also, as you now know, had her damehood revoked and it is unlikely, by the way, she'll ever get it. I would say I feel sorry for you, but while the winner of six Olympic medals, a world champion, European champion, one of the greatest dressage riders of all time, you are a loser who ABUSED'd an animal, no doubt to attempt submission. I can also understand that this was done several years ago, and because of that, you are not the same person you were then. I understand that. The fact that video was held for several years, though, raises other questions. Also, I'm curious why it wasn't brought to light sooner, because then perhaps we could have gotten someone better for the Tokyo Olympics. Although lockdown may have played a part in you getting bronze then. If you want to see what happened, I'll link an article down below, the video of the um, incident, heinous act committed by Charlotte is actually in the article itself. Again, I can't play it. I will get into trouble. So next, let's move on to Just Stop Oil. Lucia Whitaker de Abro, Cressida Gethin, Louise Lancaster, Daniel Shaw. Yeah, these, these people, oh, and Roger Holm. Sorry, there's five of them in the picture, as you can see. Wonderful people. They conspired to cause gridlock on London's orbital motorway and have been sentenced to lengthy terms by a judge who told them they had crossed the line from concerned campaigner to fanatic. They were all found guilty of conspiracy to cause a public nuisance for coordinating the attacks on the M25 over four days in November 2022. Roger Hollam got five years, the other four, four years. They're all quite middle class, one's very, very young, and that is not a uh, great sign for them. Now, people can debate as much as they like about whether or not the sentence is appropriate. As far as I was concerned, actually, yes, I fully support these prison sentences. The M25 is the single busiest road in the United Kingdom. To cause problems on that is to shut London down and many areas of the country where you need the M25 to get to it. If you want people on your side, you need to stop poisoning the well. Roger Holm, who has been sentenced to five years, did say they intended to cause the biggest disruption in British modern history in order to force the then Conservative government to meet Just Stop Oil's core demand, which was an end to new oil and gas licenses and oil and gas exploration in the North Sea. But we need that as we transition to renewables. Because of the issues with Russia, we need their help something which many within Just Stop Oil don't understand this is a transition phase. If you hear a tiny puppy yapping, I'm really sorry. The new Prime Minister, Keir Starmer, has actually said he will not be intervening with the sentences they've been given, because that is something he could have done. Right now he has a lot to do, and they are not a priority. They're going to have to deal with this one for themselves. Each of their respective barristers sought unsuccessfully to persuade the judge that lengthy sentences could be avoided. For example, one said the likelihood of his reoffending was lowered by the fact that the new Labour government had essentially met Just Up Oil's core demand by ending North Sea oil and gas exploration, which when Labour realise they need it, they'll turn their back on quickly. In mitigation, Cressida Gethin offered her own comments and said, I want to remind the court once more that my reasons for taking action were not beliefs or opinions, 
Earth's life support systems are breaking down due to human activities, whether we believe it or not. These are not beliefs or opinions, and feeling strongly that this is wrong is greatly understandable, I would argue. I deeply regret this action was necessary, I maintain it was necessary, and I stand by my actions as the most effective option available to me. Well, it's going to suck for you that on your criminal record, you're going to have this on there. Because by forcing traffic to stop on the M25, you caused more pollution. You're not allowed to turn your engine off on that road. You also stopped ambulances from getting to their jobs. Yes, that was something you did on that day. You learnt from it quickly afterwards, but you did it on that day. Now, of course, with Just the Oil, there has been a decline in their relevancy. They claim some of their demands are being met by Labour. Labour are going through some teething pains as a government, suspending the whip from those who do not vote within their line, yes. It's going to be very interesting to see how they manage to maintain their power over the next five years. Just the Oil couldn't even survive one term of the Conservatives. They were out of relevancy before Labour even took office. And many of you deserved prison for some of the crap you pulled. Because I want to continually hold them to the mark for as long as possible, honourable mention to Doctor Who and by extension Disney for what they're doing to it. It is believed now that Doctor Who isn't going to survive beyond its second season under the uh, umbrella of Disney. It's been going downhill for a little while now. I really do hope you understand that what you've done to a British institution those involved in Doctor Who over the years is entirely your fault. Because the fans didn't enable it, they just went along for the ride, not realising just how much you were going to screw them over. Additional honourable mention goes to anyone going to a gig and just taking loads of videos and wondering why they can't remember the show, while believing that it's some kind of phenomenon involving memory loss. Like you've all been neuralised so you can't remember the show, so you have to rely on the videos you took while staring at your phone to record the videos to get those perfect songs in. I will admit, one or two songs at a gig, I will undoubtedly record or take some photos of, so I can watch it back at home. But for most of the show I'm watching. If I wasn't, I wouldn't have gotten a handshake from the aggression vocalist for Amaranth when I last went to see them, and I wouldn't have seen Sam Totman of Dragonforce stood right in front of me, because I was at the barricade, while he was watching Infected Rain and Amaranth. He was cool, by the way. This is not surprising that you have memory loss, because again, if you're more interested in watching your phone, you're not paying attention to the show. It's almost scientifically proven at this point, and people call me a boomer. Apparently, I got this right. To the last subject, we're going to address a statement put out by Mr. Beast. Over the last few days, I've become aware of the serious allegations of Ava Tyson's behaviour online, and I am disgusted and opposed to such unacceptable acts. During that time, I have been focused on hiring an independent third party to conduct a thorough investigation to ensure I have all the facts. That said, I've seen enough online and taken immediate action to remove Ava from the company, my channel, and any association with Mr. Beast. I do not condone or support any of the inappropriate actions. I will allow the independent investigators the necessary time to conduct a comprehensive investigation and will take any further action based on their findings. I do not support the downfall or tearing down of someone like Mr. Beast, but at the same time, there is a lot more information coming out, and people are jumping to a lot of conclusions, which I feel is a bit wrong at the moment. People need time to air their perspectives, of course they do. I'm not involved, so I have to wait and see what happens. The independent investigation intrigues me. I've seen accusations that all members of the Mr. Beast crew are represented by a company that is well, owned by Disney, so they're all essentially disney light presenters. That's an interesting take. Others saying that Mr. Beast knew about all of this. Others pointing out that upon discussing anything Mr. Beast, you're getting yellow check marked by YouTube, because at the moment, the Mr. Beast channel is that top pinnacle of YouTube. It really is. It's a really tricky area to navigate, but principles must always uphold above anything else. Do those who seek to present what is known or is believed or accused, the yellow check mark is not a deterrent. It's a concern that YouTube would act to curtail information, and much of it is information at the moment. Acting on in the way that YouTube has risks putting Mr. Beast as a channel where it shouldn't be, because it isn't untouchable. Again, I don't support tearing it down because of all the humanitarian work. I really don't now, especially. Some saying the content from the past is faked, using videos of Jimmy talking about Bad Babby, is that her name? I don't even know if that was real or not. Again, there's so much information and it's two separate subjects. 
But where they do line up is when it concerns Ava Tyson or Chris Tyson, depending on the version of the person when these crimes were committed. I personally am going to exercise some caution on the subject matter and wait for more information to come out. I think the discussion concerning Ava Chris Tyson is for the most part going nowhere. So the focus has shifted to Mr. Beast because others who have worked for the company have brought to light information we did not otherwise know before concerning the amount of knowledge Mr. Beast must have had before acting and whether or not it was acted in good faith or done as a form of damage control. Again, I don't know at the moment, but I'm putting it here because this statement's a rather interesting one, and as many have pointed out, it's not really all that good, really. I will admit, though, an independent investigator is an interesting way to go about this. I support that. As long as it's transparent and open, I think you have a chance at being able to get this swept to one side with a level of honesty or integrity. Decency. These words exist in the online space, right? 